although remarketing is still the facet of the industry that is maybe a little bit less known than the sales and the new contracts and the mobility etc remarketing is still so complex and so important for the whole automotive industry so after three years what do we see as organizers of the fleet europe remarketing forum there are more and more people coming the world is changing. There are disruptors coming in also into the marketing industry. And so we feel that there is a need for this community to meet, to exchange best practices, to try to understand what's happening and also to anticipate to the future. The market will change, we're going into electric vehicles, we have the white generation, uh, we will open uh, hopefully new markets, um, that's in themselves a challenge. Remarketing is transforming uh, a physical asset into cash. Uh, so for an LCV and a PC it's exactly the same thing. But anyway, we see that talking about the specification uh, of the LCVs themselves, uh, we have a lot of different steps to take care about uh, when it comes to, uh, to remarket the vehicles. It requires uh, some specific uh, skills uh, and, uh, and know-how, which is not so present, let's say, also useful when it comes to talk about uh, PCs. Most of the of the vans or, or LCV are uh, customized or, or uh, with uh, some uh, uh, bespoke uh, um, uh, equipment. And and the fact is, the client who is buying or is searching for this uh, for this car as a new owner, uh, the the specification of this particular vehicle maybe won't fit uh, the needs of the further uh, the further customers. We are probably not talking so much about disruption because all the trends that we see and that will reshape the industry in the next three to five years are already there. Um, one particular focus was uh, the area of online and digitization and um, the fact that more and more business models are entering the market, cutting out the middlemen and um, starving some of the players out of um, used cars, young used cars, which makes it particularly difficult for them to, yeah, to stay profitable. Yeah, so I think that's one of the more um, challenging things for a couple of um, the incumbent players to, to deal with. It is difficult because what we're selling now is the first and second generation of electric cars which don't have the same range as the new cars who will be produced next year. The challenge is who is buying a car which brings you 60 kilometers when you see already on your doorstep a car which brings you up to 300 kilometers. And that is a big challenge we're having and I hope that the car manufacturers are not going so fast with the development of longer range of cars and even cheaper uh, cars because then it's an unsellable product where the whole industry is going into a lost situation, which should, we should avoid that. I think the questions are, are changing a bit. For example, these days it's a lot about infotainment, about a car to, to driver interaction and with um, driver assistance systems coming more and more advanced, the autonomous car playing a grander role in the future. Um, the question becomes very central around um, yeah, infotainment and what's the residual value for that system. With um, in-car technology, um, Apple CarPlay, um, Android Auto, but also some of the yeah, own developments of manufacturers um, together with um, the likes of, of Harman, um, they enable the car to stay up to date technologically um, in the area of interfacing with the, with the um, driver and that makes the car much more attractive as a used car in two, three, four, five years and you don't even have to exchange um, technology anymore.